Alright, so in this video I'm going to be giving you guys five tips to help you guys out in your teaching. Now this video was recorded during distance learning even though that's not going to be the focus of this lesson. If you want a video about just tips for distance learning, check out the video up here. But for now, let's go ahead and get started. So tip number five is observe others. You need to find a mentor and ask them if you can go and observe them. Now you would want to see the best teachers at your school, especially if they teach the same subject that you do, to give you some ideas and to see what a classroom looks like. You see, when I was doing my student teaching, I knew what I didn't want to do. I knew I didn't want to be that teacher that just hands out worksheets and has a student read from the textbook, but I didn't really envision what type of teacher I wanted to be until I went into Mr. Roten's class that I really got to see, wow, this is awesome. I want to be that kind of teacher. That's the style that I want for myself. That's what I should be doing. That's how I felt and going to his class was the best professional development I could ever ask for. If I can call myself a good teacher, it's because of the fact that I've had great mentors like Mr. Rowan and Woodside and all the other teachers at my school site, but especially for Mr. Rowan, you know, having that platform that he does and those great lessons uh, that he has and those great ideas, it really allowed me to learn so much. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, what if there's no good teachers at my school? which probably there is, right? But let's say there aren't. At least you can go and observe these teachers and at least find out what not to do. That is also a learning experience, going into these classrooms and seeing, oh, I don't like the way they did that. I gotta make sure I don't do that. That is also gonna help you grow. All right, so tip number four, be yourself. Now, I know it seems kind of contradictory because I'm telling you to go observe others and try to do what they do if you like it. You also gotta remember to be yourself. Don't be a robot and try to copy what the other people, what the other teachers are doing. My master teacher was a six foot four ex-military guy and his classroom was all about behavior management. It was all about basically instilling fear onto the students. And in my first year, because that's the only real example I had as a teacher, seeing uh, what a teacher ought to be like, I kind of came into my classroom and that's kind of what I try to mimic and it did not go well for me. You need to let your personality shine through. For example, for myself, I'm Hispanic, I like soccer, I'm a father, and that comes about a lot in my teaching and it helps me make those connections with my students. I made so many connections with my students that are also fathers. No, I'm just kidding, obviously not, not that, right? But in other aspects of who I am as a person, oh, you like Dragon Ball Z? Oh yeah, Goku's my favorite character, blah, blah, blah. Those kinds of things, you know, you got to let shine through, through your lessons and through your personality. You know, I like to joke around a lot. So that's just my style of personality. You don't have to be the funniest person if you want to be a teacher. It definitely helps. But definitely keep in mind who you are. Let that realness kind of come out in your teaching. All right, so tip number three is try new things. Now, you're a new teacher, so almost everything is going to be new to you. But if something doesn't work, it's okay to try something new, okay? You are trying to find what teaching style you're gonna have, but you're never gonna find it if you don't try new things. If you get lessons from other teachers, if they let you have their lessons, which is a great starting point for you, try to make them better. Try to personalize them for you and your teaching style. And just overall, every year, after you look at that lesson that you did last year, think about what can you do to make that lesson better. So in order to make things even more immersive, I started doing things like I brought a smoke machine into the classrooms. In order to create thunder and lightning, I had students flickering the lights. I used smells in a lot of different lessons too. If we're walking through an orchard, uh, I started putting apple smells with some Febreze, right? So I started doing these types of things and it was awesome. The kids got really into it. So for example, anytime that we would fall into a water, like I said, not there when we're learning about the Mayans, I would have a bubble machine and I would start, you know, letting the bubbles spray out to the kids. And the kids really liked that. It was very immersive for them. And that is something that I had never done before until this last year. And it worked really great. 
So when you find something that works pretty good, try to sprinkle elements of that in other lessons as well. Because again, you want to find what really works and kind of try to do that. Now you don't want to overdo it because then it can come become it can become repetitive or kind of boring. But definitely find elements of lessons that you like and try to apply those to other lessons as well. You got to remember that teaching is an art. And in order for you to be creative, you have to be intentional with it. Ideas aren't going to fall from the sky. You got to sit down and think, what can I do to make this lesson come alive? What can I do to make this lesson better? Asking yourselves those questions are going to make you a much better teacher. All right, tip number two is don't expect perfection. It's your first year. You are not going to be the best teacher on campus, period. It's not going to happen. Teaching is an art. Teaching is something that requires practice. The more you do it, the better you're going to become. The first time Michael Jordan, the first time that Michael Jordan picked up a basketball or Lionel Messi picked up a soccer ball was not as good as in the prime of their careers. Why? Because they had lots of practice after that first time that made them a lot better. So don't put that pressure on yourself. Know your place, know your position. Like I said, get a mentor and play that part of a new teacher wanting to learn. Don't come in saying, we're gonna do this, 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 and that, and blah, blah, blah. Don't be a little know-it-all. Know your place. Now, I'm not really a basketball fan, but I just got finished watching the Last Dance, which is a documentary about Michael Jordan, and I learned that there was this other guy that was super talented on the same team. Uh, his name was Pippen, and Pippen was a great number two to Michael Jordan. He knew his place, he knew his position, he never really tried to outshine him, but he was a great help to Michael Jordan. That should be you in your first year. Know your place, try to get better, obviously, but take in that idea of I'm here to learn from you guys so again always strive to be better but don't bring yourself out it's your first year the expectations are low you are learning take your time because it takes time you know as a teacher there is always room to do more stuff there's always more parents you can call there's always more work that you can grade there's always more lessons that you can do but if you focus too much on it and you don't let yourself breathe and also have some downtime, you will get burned out and it's gonna lead to a very bad situation where you're aggravated, where you're too pressured to focus on what's really important, which is your delivery of lessons. Always focus more on that. I don't know why new teachers especially feel like they have to grade every single assignment that students do. You don't have to do that. That's gonna burn you out. And is that really helping the students? You grading a little worksheet that you handed out last minute because you didn't have enough time to really focus in on your lessons, that is not good. Focus on your delivery and on your lessons themselves and not so much on just grading a bunch of work. That is also gonna make a big difference because in that next year, you're gonna be able to use that lesson again and build on it and become even better at your craft. Focus in on that aspect and not so much on everything else and try to be in every single committee and stuff like that. What's most important as a teacher should be your teaching. All right, so here's tip number one. So tip number one is be engaging. This is the most important element of teaching in my opinion. If you can do this right, if you can engage your students, all the other problems in the classroom, like for example, behavior issues, will start to dissipate. They will start to go away because they're so interested in what you have to say. There's no point in writing all the standards on the board, printing out all these worksheets, doing all this stuff around a lesson if when you deliver that lesson, the students don't pay attention. The students are not interested. There's no point in everything else. Yeah, they might do the assignments because they care about their grade, some of them, but is that really learning? Turning in work, does that really show you that they learned something? Maybe it shows you that they did the work or maybe it shows you that they learned for a little while. It's kind of like this. Imagine you're throwing this big party for your daughter. You bought all the food. You bought a bunch of candy, a bunch of piñatas. You got yourself some beautiful decorations. You spent hundreds of dollars to make this party great. But 
you forgot to send out the invitations. And now no one comes to this party. That's kind of what it's like when teachers prepare their lessons and put all this work in, but they don't make the lesson engaging or they present it in a monotone voice like this. Then what was the point of doing all that work if that lesson and that delivery of the lesson was not done in an interesting or fun way? The students aren't going to pay attention and all that time was for nothing. So with that, thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.